Short Short Gamey Story Time Cusley was a rude little boy. He never respected his friends, he always put them down and was rude to them. We won the game because of me! You did nothing! Huh? Cusley's teacher, Miss Dorothy, noticed this. She decided to teach Cusley a lesson so that he would learn how to respect his friends. Hmm. One day, during story time, Miss Dorothy asked the class to sit down. Today, I'm going to tell you a story. A story about a flower named Pinky Petunia. Pinky Petunia was a proud flower. She was very rude to everyone and thought about no one but herself. I'm the prettiest flower in the garden. There's no one prettier than me. Pinky always put her friends down. Hey, butterfly. You are of no use to this garden. You really aren't. Huh? Pinky, please don't be so rude. Everyone is useful in one way or the other. Well, you aren't, so stop bothering me. Pinky's rude behavior upset everyone in the garden. So the parts of the flower decided to teach her a lesson. Pinky is always rude to us. We should stop helping her. Maybe then she'll recognize our value. Good idea. Pinky will not be able to bloom without our help. So, the parts of the flower decided to stop helping Pinky. The next day, the roots didn't hold Pinky's stem. Pinky's leaves didn't make any food. And her petals didn't blossom. Pinky was terrified. Oh no! What's happening to me? Why am I so hungry? Why can't I stand straight? Why am I drooping? Because everyone stopped helping Pinky, she started to wither. They've all stopped helping me. That's why I can't stand tall or bloom. Oh, I shouldn't have been so proud. Hmm, I shouldn't have been so rude to everyone. All of you, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Pinky finally understood that she only looked beautiful because of the other's help. And once she admitted her mistake, the other flower parts helped her blossom and look pretty again. So, that's how Pinky Petunia learned the importance of teamwork. Right! Pinky Petunia did well because of her team! Uh, I don't think I'd like to be like Pinky Petunia. I don't want my friends to stop helping me. I understand that each and every one of us is important. Cusley finally understood that everyone is important and that teamwork always helps us win. Cusley was always showing off and putting his friends down. Chica, you are slowpoke. You can't run as fast as me. La la la, la la la, la la la. Oh, Choo Choo, you sound like a frog when you sing. 
Don't you wish you could sing as nicely as me? Cha-cha! You really can't dance. Look at me! I dance so well. Chiku! The pictures you draw look terrible. Look at the ones I draw. They are wonderful. Kusli's friends always felt hurt by his rude words. I wish Kusli wasn't so rude to us. Yes! I wish he understood how badly he makes us feel. One day, Choo Choo and the other children decided to participate in a talent day that was being held at the school. La 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 Choo Choo sang beautifully and won first prize. Chiku received an award for a picture that she painted. And Chica and Cha Cha won some races. The only friend who didn't win anything was Cusley. And he felt terrible about it. I'm the only one who hasn't won anything. I always thought I was the best. But Choo Choo and the others didn't make fun of Cusley. Instead, they went up to him and tried to make him feel better. Don't lose hope, Cusley. There are many more competitions that you can take part in. There's a dance competition coming up soon. We are participating in it. You're a good dancer. I'm sure we'll win if you join our team. So Cusley joined Choo Choo and the others. They all practiced together. Come on! Let's work hard and help each other win! Choo Choo and her friends stole the show during the dance competition. Hooray! Everyone loves our dance! The team's dance was the best, and they won first prize. Yay! Our team has won! Yes, Cusley! We won! Because we all did our best and helped each other win. That's what is so special about being a team. Cusley never made fun of anyone ever again. He tried to be more like Choo Choo by encouraging others instead. He learned that being patient, kind, and loving can bring out the best in others. In the city of Scottsdale, there lived a girl named Choo Choo. She was a sweet girl with a very kind heart. But she was so careless that she kept losing her school supplies. Although it upset her, Choo Choo's mom kept buying new school supplies. Then one Monday morning, her mommy yelled out, Choo Choo, could you get me your backpack, please? Yes, mommy. I'll be right there. Here it is. I've got to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. Her mom took out her pencil case and found it to be empty. Hmm, that's it. I've had enough of her losing her school supplies. This needs to stop. She needs to start being more responsible. Did you wash your hands? I sure did, Mommy. Good job. Listen, young lady. I have been patient with you. I have replenished your empty pencil case with school supplies every single day. I have replenished it with two new pencils and a sharpener again today. These are going to be your school supplies for the whole week. If you lose them, you won't get new ones for another week. Have I made myself clear? Yep, 
I'm going to be really careful with them, Mommy. Good. The school bus will be here any minute. Let's get going. So, how was your day at school? It was good. I had a lot of fun. Okay, time to grab a fruit. Fruit? Ew! I will pretend I didn't hear that. Are you done with the fruit? Yes! Good. Do you have all of your school supplies? Choo Choo looked at her mom with a blank stare. I don't remember. Hmm, go fetch me your pencil case. Choo Choo walked to her backpack, grabbed her pencil case, and gave it to her mom. Nature calls. I'll be right back. Choo Choo's mom opened up the pencil case and once again was shocked to see it empty. Now I've had it. This girl needs to learn responsibility. Choo Choo, are you done? Nearly done, Mom. Be right there. Hurry up. We are heading out for some shopping. Ta-da! I'm here. Put on your shoes and hop into the car. Choo Choo ran to put on her shoes and jumped into the car. Let's head to the store and pick up a few things. Sure, Mom. Uh, do I get a treat? Hmm, one small chocolate. And that's it. Yay! Thank you! Choo Choo's mother stopped by the store. Choo Choo was busy walking along the aisle, searching for her chocolate. Her mom picked up a few packs of pencils, a few sharpeners, and some chocolates. The car stopped by a small foster home. Come on, Choo Choo! Choo Choo got down and held her mom's hand and walked along. Children, Mrs. Charlie is here to visit us. Could you all please come here? All the kids assembled in the visitor's area. Hello, little ones. Hello, Mrs. Charlie. This is my daughter, Choo Choo. Hello, Choo Choo. She wanted to visit you all and play with you. Aww, sweet of her. Could you kids teach her how to draw? Yes, Mrs. Charlie. One kid ran and fetched a piece of paper and the pencil case. Come on, Choo Choo. Let's all draw. The kids gave the pencil case to Choo Choo. Choo Choo opened it and found a small pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Choo Choo looked at her mom and her eyes flooded with tears. Hey! Why are you crying? Come on, don't cry. Choo Choo silently walked over to her mom and whispered in her ear. Choo Choo's mom gave a pack of pencils to Choo Choo. Choo Choo, share these pencils with your friends here. Yes, mommy. All the kids jumped with joy. They sharpened the new pencils and started to draw. A few hours went by. Choo Choo, it's getting late. Give them all a hug. I know you will miss them all. Let's come back another day. Okay, Mommy. Choo Choo gave them all a hug. I'll see you all soon. Choo Choo was awfully quiet. What's wrong, Angel? 
Choo Choo's eyes filled with tears. She started to talk. Mommy, my friends back there had one pencil with a broken eraser and a broken sharpener. Yes, they did. And here I've been losing my school supplies every single day. Hmm. I have been careless with my school supplies. I have lost so many pencils and sharpeners. If I had been careful, I could have shared them with my friends. Mommy? Yes, darling. I will never ever lose my school supplies again. I have realized my mistake. I will be responsible, Mommy. Good, sweetheart. I'm glad you realized it. Mommy kissed Choo Choo. And from that day on, Choo Choo never again lost her school supplies. She also made a point to visit her friends every weekend and play with them. Choo Choo and her friends lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Cusley. He had grown to be a naughty kid. He pushed his friends down, bullied them, and wanted his way around in everything. His friends were soft and forgiving in nature. They just put up with his harsh and rough behavior thinking he would change. He had the bad habit of tearing his books, throwing his clothes, and breaking his toys. It was not going to be long before someone taught him a lesson. It was a nice sunny day. His mom yelled out, Cusley! Your room looks like a garbage bin. Your clothes, toys, and books are all over the floor. I need the floor cleaned up with all your things put in place. I will be paying a visit to your room pretty soon. You don't want to be grounded, do you? Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. I'll make sure the floor is cleaned up. Wow! That was fast! This does not look like your room. Good job! Hmm? <laughs> Come on! Let's go for a stroll and grab an ice cream! It's a treat for your hard work. Mommy, I feel tired and sleepy. Dinner is ready. Have an early dinner and hit the sack. Yeah, okay. Whoa, I so forgot that I had dumped these things on the bed. Now, get out of my bed and get back to where you belong. Cusley threw his books to the floor. He tossed his toys around and dumped his clothes under his bed. Now that my bed is cozy, let me put off the light and go to sleep. The next moment, Cusley was deep in sleep and was snoring away to glory. He started to mumble. He started to toss and turn in his sleep. The toy monster truck zooms past, trying to crush his toes. The books flew around, crashing and bumping into him. The clothes piled up together and was trying to cover him. The toy robot was pulling his hair, jumping up and down on his tummy. Finally, the giant storybook that was hanging on the rack above him crashed onto his head 
with a bang. There was a loud thud. Cusley had rolled off the bed and was on the floor. He woke up shrieking, startled, dazed, and sweaty. Whoa! What was that? Looks like I had a dreadful dream. It was more of a nightmare. Let me get up and put my things in order. Let me put them where they belong. From that day onwards, he realized his folly and decided to be gentle to one and all. He promised that he will take good care of his books and toys. In the quiet suburb of Scottsdale, there lived a boy named Cha-Cha. And strong as steel. Cha-Cha had a problem. He watched way too much TV. It had literally become an addiction. And this upset his mom very much. Cha-Cha! You're watching way too much TV! On your feet! You need to get some exercise. This is not a choice, young man. Mom! Give me a break! What part of this is not a choice did you not understand? Turn off that TV now! I'm not going to say it again. But, but... Turn off that TV now. You don't want to be grounded, do you? Okay, stop yelling already. There, it's off. Happy? Good. There is a time for everything. And there's a limit to everything. Now put on your shoes and go out and play. Okay. Cha-Cha grabbed his video game console and tucked it into his pocket. He then put on his shoes and headed out. I'm going to play. I'll be back soon. Be careful, sweetheart. When Cha-Cha's dad returned from work, he found Cha-Cha sitting under a tree playing video games. Hey, honey. I'm home. How was your day? It was good. Guess what? I saw Junior on my way home. Yeah. I kicked him out of the house so that he could get some exercise. That's not what I saw. I saw him sit under the tree and play his video game. Oh, no. Hmm. I'm starting to worry about this child of ours. Hmm, me too. I've tried to get him to play ball with me. I've tried to drag him to go bicycling. Nothing. Nothing seems to have gotten him away from his TV and video games. While the parents were talking, they heard screams coming from the yard next door. Cha-Cha's mom peeked out the window and noticed a bunch of kids playing and having fun. She noticed Cha-Cha standing outside and watching them play. What are you looking at? Shh! It looks like we have a new neighbor with four kids. Look how he's staring at them playing. This might get him to make friends and play outdoors. Let's sit and watch what he does. Cha-Cha stood there watching the kids play basketball and soccer. The kids were having so much fun <laughs> that Cha-Cha wanted to play too. But Cha-Cha had never played these games before, so he didn't know what to do. Every day, Cha-Cha just stood there watching the kids play. Then one day, the kids noticed Cha-Cha watching them play. They came up to Cha-Cha 
and introduced themselves. And Cha-Cha introduced himself too. Nice to meet you, Cha-Cha. Would you like to join us? Yeah, but I don't know how to play these games. I have never played them. No big deal. Join in and we will teach you how to play. Okay. Cha-Cha joined in with the kids and started learning the games. Wow! This is so much fun! I never thought games would be like this. And I've never had so much fun. I feel so happy. Thanks, guys. Aw, you're welcome. We're so happy to play with you, Cha-Cha. Since that day, Cha-Cha's addiction to TV and video gaming disappeared. And he never missed a single day of playing outside with his friends. It was recess. Choo Choo was watching her friends play on the playground. Cha Cha was on the swing. Yippee! I'm having so much fun! Chica and Chiku were having fun on the seesaw. Up, down! Up, down! <laughs> Even though everyone was having fun, everyone was making sure that the other children had a turn. Cha-Cha, can I sit on the swing now? Of course! Would you like a turn on the seesaw? Yes! Please, come and have a turn. All the children were being very thoughtful. But then, Cusley came into the playground. He started pushing the children. He wanted the play equipment all for himself. Hey, get up! Go and find something else to do. I want a swing. I want the seesaw for myself. Choo Choo saw how Cusley's selfish behavior was ruining everyone's fun. So she called out to her friends. Let's play a game. It's a fun new one. Each of us will shout out the name of an animal. And then everyone will make the sound that animal makes. Who wants to start? I want to... Horse! Nay, nay, nay! Nay, nay! <laughs> it's my turn now. Cow! Moo, moo, moo! <laughs> Cat! Meow! 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 <laughs> While Choo Choo and the others were having fun playing their game, Cusley was going higher and higher on the swing. Ha-ha! I'm gonna go as high as the sky! Suddenly, Cusley went so high that he was about to fall off the swing. Luckily, Choo Choo saw him. Yikes! Huh? Friends! Cusley's in trouble! Let's catch him before he falls! Choo Choo and the others caught Cusley and saved him from really hurting himself. I was mean to you all. But you all still helped me. I'm sorry for my bad behavior. Please forgive me. Don't worry, Cusley. We are your friends. And we are always here to help you. Cusley apologized to the children. 
and promised never to be mean again. Everyone forgave him and invited him to join their games. Pig! Oink, oink, oink! Oink, oink, oink! <laughs> Olivia's family had just moved to a new town. And Olivia had to go to a new school. She didn't know anyone in the new town. And she felt very nervous on the first day of school. I'm going to feel lonely at the new school. I don't know anyone there. I won't have anyone to talk to or to play with. Olivia always shared everything with her mother. And so she went up to her mother and told her how she was feeling. Mom, I don't feel like going to the new school. I don't have any friends there. What if they don't like me or let me play with them or let me be their friend? Olivia's mother tried to calm her fears. Don't worry, Olivia. You'll be fine. You'll make lots of new friends. I'm sure you'll come home with a smile. Come on! Now let's go before the school bell rings. Talking to her mother made Olivia feel much better. But she was still nervous about how things would go. When Olivia entered her new classroom, the teacher welcomed her warmly. Hello, Olivia! Welcome! We are very happy to have you here. The teacher then introduced Olivia to her new classmates. Children, this is Olivia. She's new to our town and school. I hope you all will make her feel comfortable and be kind. Hello, Olivia. I'm Choo Choo. I'd like to be your friend. You can sit next to me. We'll have lots of fun together. Choo Choo made Olivia feel very welcome. She also introduced Olivia to her friends. Guys, this is Olivia. I told her she could play with us and sit next to us at lunchtime. Hi, Hi Olivia! Olivia. Mm, hello! Olivia felt very comfortable. Thank you, Choo Choo. I was really nervous this morning, but you have been so kind that I feel like I've known you all forever. I think I'm going to like this school in town thanks to you and your friends. When Olivia went home that evening, she had a smile on her face. Hi, Mom! <laughs> Did you have a good time at your new school, Olivia? Choo Choo and my other new friends were so kind. They made me feel very comfortable. Now I'm excited to go to school to see and play with my new friends. Olivia no longer felt nervous or sad about moving to a new town and going to a new school. <laughs> Choo Choo's warmth and kindness had made Olivia very happy and comfortable. In the busy city of Scottsdale, there lived a boy named Cha-Cha. Though he was a sweet kid by nature, he didn't know how to manage his time. This made him difficult to manage for his mother. Getting him to do his work on time was always a challenge for his mother. Yeah. 
From the moment he awoke until the moment he was tucked back into bed at night, his mother struggled to get him to do his work. Good morning, my angel. Rise and shine. Get up. It's time to go to school. I'm going to fix your lunch and we'll be back in five minutes. Please get up and get ready. I don't want to have to keep yelling at you to wake up, please. His mom goes to fix his lunch and mumbles to herself. Cha-Cha is growing up, but he still does not know how to manage his time. I have tried everything, but nothing has worked so far. It zaps me of all my energy. I've been thinking the same thing too. Why don't you take a trip to the school and talk to his teacher? Hmm, I guess I should. A little help from his school couldn't hurt. I'll go today. Hmm, gotta go. Time to hit the road before the traffic starts to pile up. Okay, I love you. Have a good day. I love you too. Have a good day. Cha-Cha, are you up yet? Cha-Cha, you're going to be late for school. Okay, okay. I'm getting up. Stop yelling already. Cha-Cha gets up and starts to get ready. Cha-Cha then finishes his breakfast. Get your bag, Cha-Cha. It's time to go to school. Yeah, yeah. Don't give me that attitude, young man. Now get up. Cha-Cha gets into the car and his mom drives him to school. Run, Cha-Cha. The bell just rang. Have a good day, sweetheart. Okay, okay, I'm going. Cha-Cha walked slowly to class. His mom parked the car and headed towards the principal's office. She knocked on the door and went into the principal's office. Good morning, Miss Lucy. Good morning, Miss Charlie. Well, well, what a surprise. It's good to see you. What can I do for you today? Cha-Cha's mom tells the principal about Cha-Cha's struggles with time management and asks for her help. The principal smiles. <laughs> I get it. I have an idea. Tomorrow is the field trip that he has eagerly been awaiting. The bus leaves school at 7.30 a.m. Drive him to school tomorrow, but get here five minutes late. I have a hunch that this plan will help him learn. Thanks, Miss Lucy. Cha-Cha's mom leaves the school and heads back home. The next morning, Cha-Cha, wake up and get ready. Today is your field trip. The bus will leave without you if you don't hurry. Cha-Cha yeah. gets up and looks at the clock. It's already late! Let me get ready! We've got to get there on time, Mommy! Like the principal said, Cha-Cha's mom made sure she was five minutes late dropping him off. When they arrived at school, Cha-Cha found that the school bus had left without him. His eyes filled with tears. Cha-Cha stood there feeling miserable with a long, sad face. I'm so sorry, Cha-Cha. It's sad that the bus left without you. All this happened because I was not on time. It's all my fault. I'm sorry, Mom. Suddenly, he heard a honk from the school bus from around the corner. His face lit up as he looked at his mom. Wow! It's my school bus! It's my school bus! It came back to pick me up! He hugged his mom and looked at her. Mommy, I have learned a lesson. I'm never going to be troublesome for you anymore. 
and I'm going to make sure that I manage my time better. I'm sorry for what I've put you through, Mommy. Aww. Mommy hugged Cha-Cha tightly. Now go and have a great field trip. Cha-Cha climbed into the bus and waved bye to his mommy. And from that day on, he managed his time all by himself and made sure he was not troublesome for his mom. This was in a quiet suburb in the city of Scottsdale. The suburb had a nice school and a lovely park. A little girl named Choo Choo and her younger brother Cha Cha lived in the lovely suburb. Next door lived a little girl Chiku with her brother Chica. They all went to the same school and were very close friends. After school, they loved playing in the neighborhood park. One day, while playing, they had noticed a man sleeping under a tree. This man seems to be sleeping whenever we see him. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. Should we find out whether he's sick and needs help? No. Let's not go near strangers and talk to them. But we should help. Once we go home, let's tell Mom and try to help him. You are right. Let's do that. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chiku, and Chica started to play. <laughs> I need to get rid of these kids. They are disturbing my sleep. Need to make sure they never come back. Looking around, the man noticed a few paint cans. Mommy, there is a man in the park who is always sleeping. We fear that he is sick. We wanted to tell you and get him help. Good job! I shall look into it. Choo Choo's mom called the mayor's office and reported. The mayor's office assured to have a look into it. The mayor visited the park and he put a community notice. Homeless man. The mayor left the park and the man started to paint the monster. The weekend had started. The kids head towards the park, wanting to play. Choo Choo's mom, with a book in her hand, sat on the park bench. Mommy! Mommy! All of a sudden, Choo Choo's mom heard the kids scream. Whoa! What's wrong? Why did you all scream? Why are you trembling? The kids pointed their fingers towards the painting. She saw the monster's painting and held the kids. She distracted them by giving them some toys and a little candy. She called the mayor's office and reported this incident. Folks, Till we figure this out, let's not send the kids to the park alone. Play safe and yell out if you get scared. I'm right here. Just play where I can see you. We play right here and we'll be safe. As they were playing, they see the man shivering. Cha-Cha, looks like the man is really sick. Look at him shivering. You were right. Let's go tell your mom. The kids run and tell Choo-Choo's mom what they had seen. 
Good job, little ones! Let me call for an ambulance to take him to the hospital. And the man got better. Who brought me to the hospital? He was told about the kids who found him sick. The man felt bad of his misdeed. Discharged from the hospital, the man went to the park. He saw the kids playing from a distance. I was being mean to these little kids. It's time to make it right. Let me remove the scary monster picture I had painted. From that day onward, he sat and enjoyed watching the kids playing. He watched over them and kept an eye on them ever after. It was in the lovely school district of Scottsdale. The district hosted one of the best schools by name, Scottsdale Junior High. Chica, Chiku, Choo Choo, Cha Cha, and Cusley, who were the thickest of friends, went to the school. One fine day, the teacher asked the kids, little ones, those who know how to make little snacks for yourself, please raise your hands. None of the kids raised their hands. Aw, that's okay. We are going to do a little project. We are going to make our snack for tomorrow. Ask your mom to teach you how to make a few snacks that we would want. I want you little ones to make your snacks tomorrow. That would be great, Miss Dorothy! So, who all have brought your snacks today? Except for Chiku and Chica, the others raised their hands. Chiku and Chica, why haven't you both brought your snack today? My mother was not home to make me my snack, Miss Dorothy. She had to go to the hospital to attend to my ailing grandma. Oh, I'm sorry about your grandma. Class, who is ready to share your snack with Chiku and Chica? Good! Proud of you, little ones. Listen, I'm going to make a shuffle in the seating arrangement. Sure, Miss Dorothy. Chiku, you move over and sit with Cha-Cha. Chica and Cusley, you move over and sit with Choo-Choo. Since Cusley did not offer to share his snack with Chica, Cusley felt hesitant in asking Choo Choo for a share. Her soft, gentle, and lovely nature made her offer a share to Cusley. You would love this, Cusley. Try a bit of my snack. Cusley felt ashamed for what he had done. He felt bad and wanted to make it up. The school bell rang and the kids left for their homes for the day. So, little ones, have you all learned to make your favorite snack? 
Yes, Miss Dorothy. Could we have them displayed on your tables, please? All the kids put their preparations on the table. Cusley had put four boxes on his table. You made four boxes for yourself? No, Miss Dorothy. I made more for it to be shared with my friends. Oh, that was so sweet of you. I'm so proud of you, Cusley. We all are! The teacher was extremely happy. And the whole class was.